Step one is assess the hair. I think it's okay. All right. Hey, what's up, guys? My name is The Shano. Welcome back to the Game Engine series. So, last time we took a look at the native script component and writing scripts natively in C++ in general. Check out that video if you haven't already. And today we have some of that code to undo because that episode, we, I don't even want to talk about it too much. In fact, I blame, I blame these guys. These guys are the problem. Let me quickly switch to a different overlay so I can't see chat. Those guys, those guys were the problem. I'm joking. Um, so basically what we did last time, and this is actually going to be a good way to look at the code here. What we did last time was we basically talked about adding this script class. So we now have a scriptable entity, which we can kind of inherit from. We can we have a native script component that we can use to actually add behavior to an, to an entity as you would expect from a script, but it's a native script in the sense that it's actually running in C++. It's not like a, you know, C sharp, Lua, whatever, external language script. It's just a native script right here in C++, which comes with all those native bonuses, including performance and like the whole Hazel APIs at your disposal. And it's just, it's it's a good way to go, especially if you want to write a small game, maybe in C++ and you don't want to have a whole like language runtime running there in the, in the, um, in the first place. I don't even know if that makes sense. Anyway, so the problem with what we did was that we wanted to be really smart about it. And specifically the reason we did this is because people tend to hate on virtual functions a lot. And I actually have in my whole C++ series, I have a specific episode that I want to address, um, that I want to use to address virtual functions because people, again, love to hate on virtual functions, think they're incredibly slow, or you can't use virtual functions here because, you know, going through the V table, all those redirects, they slow you down way too much, blah, blah, blah. And there is a little bit of truth to that, but the problem is it's blown out of proportion a lot of times. Virtual functions are not that bad. And in a lot of cases, they're totally acceptable to use, you know? I think that the days of writing high performance, like the days of being like, okay, virtual functions are banned in my game engine, I think that those days are over. And I mean, I use them all the time. I definitely like using them all the time. If you look at any part of the like rendering API, you know, such as this, you know, it's made of virtual functions and those are rendering calls. So clearly that's a decision there by me that's like, okay, we don't really care about virtual functions too much, which is why uh, not using them here doesn't really make sense. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going back on what we did last time. It was kind of cool to look at this stuff, I guess, maybe taught you something, but we're going to be going back and actually making it so that this scriptable entity provides some virtual functions for us. So if we look at what we needed here, we had an on create and on destroy and, 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 and an on update function. So on create, we're going to be just creating a whole bunch of virtual functions here. I'm actually going to mark them as protected inside the scriptable entity class. Uh, the only the only thing that really should be calling them apart from well protected because we might want to override them obviously in our, in our subclass. But um, the only thing that really should be calling them is the scene and scene is a friend. So this is fine. So on create, on destroy and on update with that time step. Tim step, time step. Okay. And by providing a body here as well, we're just making it so that we don't have to like implement it. We don't want to make them pure virtual because obviously you might not want to have an on destroy function inside your entity or something like that. So these can now kind of go away. Like, and by kind of, I mean, they can literally go away. We don't need them anymore because we just call, you know, the virtual function normally via the pointer, like you would any other virtual function. It's really easy. However, we do need these. Now these at the moment I did write as capturing lam lambdas and I don't really, uh, you know, I don't really uh, mind that too much, but in the interests of not using std function, because again, I don't think std function is particularly bad to use, but technically we could easily just use a function pointer. It's not that difficult to use and it would result in much cleaner code generation from our compiler because it's not a whole class with a billion things going on. As you can see, I mean, this 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 is huge, right? So instead of that, we could just use something a little bit simpler. And to do that, we can write a, a function pointer. So what we what we still need out of, out of all of this is we still need a way for our scene class on scene start to be able to instantiate our script. 
So this is like a deferred instantiation. We don't want to instantiate the script. Did I just accidentally close my solution explorer? <laughs> what, a, what a terrible move. <laughs> How do I get that back? <laughs> this episode was going so well. <laughs> I can't believe I did that. Where is my solution explorer? <laughs> it's not, okay, I found it. Okay, I found it. It's fine. I don't need to edit the video. It's fine. Um, <laughs> control Z, I like chat over there. Okay, anyway, sorry, serious mode, we're recording a video. Um, so, uh, I don't remember what I was saying. Um, everything's a disaster. We don't want to instantiate the script here. We don't want to be like new camera controller at, because, you know, we don't want to create this at the time of creating our code inside on attach for this editor layer. This is clearly something that should be instantiated at runtime. And there are specific reasons for that. For example, uh, script instances, script classes might have variables that we want to deserialize or load from somewhere. And ultimately we might not have that data yet to actually create that entity at this point in time. So we don't want to create it now and then create it again later or do weird things like that. We want to instantiate it when we start our scene. I think that that makes sense. And so to, in order for that to actually work, we basically need to write a little Lambda here that says, this is the code I want you to run. This is my deferred code that I want you to run to actually create a new instance of this particular type. So to do that, we still need this instantiate function. And in fact, I gave it a slightly better name. I think I called it instantiate script when I ran through this code briefly with, with the stream. Um, and so we have instantiate script and we have destroy script because that's really the two functions that we need. And then what these are, um, so I changed them to be non-capturing and what we do here is essentially return a new T, but we, we'll, we'll have to cast this unfortunately into the right type a bit later on. This becomes a function pointer that returns a scriptable entity pointer um, because obviously we're returning that here. So instantiate script becomes, and destroy script as well, instantiate script becomes uh, a function pointer, which looks something like this, I hope, right? Mm, yes, maybe, I think that's actually right. I think it's just, oh, he nailed it, okay. Function pointers are always, the, the syntax is always a little bit hard to write, which is why some people like to either use type def or using just to actually define the type first. So you can actually do something along the lines of this if you want to, and then later use this as the actual instantiate script function. But of course, in this case, I feel like that's just a bit too verbose. It's just two lines of code for no reason. So I like to write it out like this, even though I feel like they could definitely have improved on this syntax. Okay, so this is a void function called um, destroy script. Uh, and then this, what this is going to do is actually take in a pointer to itself. It's going to take in a pointer to a native script component, which can be odd because like, I mean, we are calling it, you know, from itself, but because it's a non-capturing Lambda, it doesn't actually have access to this like any other function would. Uh, and so we're basically simulating this, right? We're simulating the whole member function call by just making it actually take in a pointer here to a native script component. Um, and I'll call this uh, a native script component here. And then what we're going to do is delete um, native script component on instance. We don't need to cast this to a T pointer because now that it actually properly inherits, speaking of which, this should have a virtual destructor which uh, it doesn't have. So let's make that happen. Um, virtual destructor. So now that it has a virtual destructor, we can just delete the actual instance as a scriptable entity pointer. We don't need to do any casting and we can set the instance to null. This is very useful for debugging and stuff like that. Otherwise we could have just taken in the actual scriptable entity pointer instead of the native script component pointer. But I think this leads to slightly more robust code. Okay. That's it, I believe. Now, if we try and compile this, I'm pretty sure this line will not compile because uh, we're not casting it to the right type. Let's uh, quickly go into the scene class though and rewrite the rest of our code. So instead of doing all of this stuff, if the instance doesn't exist, and again, I'm gonna stress this again, but this stuff will um, move to scene on scene play or something like that, right? This stuff should happen on scene play, 
This should not happen in the update loop, but we don't have a scene play at the moment, so we do it this way. And then what this will actually do is call the instantiate script, instantiate script function, which of course returns the new instance. So we'll have to assign it like so. And then uh, we'll create an entity out of it, I guess. We'll, call, we'll run the onCreate function, which again, we do really easily now. All we have to do is do, uh, is th just do this, onCreate. And that's it. So NCS, and so the native script component instance on create. And then on update function, again, don't need to do any of this. This just becomes, uh, this just becomes on update like that with the time step. And, oh, I pressed something. Okay. <laughs> and then I think that's it. Um, and then obviously the last thing we want to do is actually call on destroy and destroy it. But again, this is something that would happen on scene stop. We don't have a scene stop at the moment until we do. I'm not even going to bother implementing that. Yes, it is technically kind of a, a memory leak, but we only, we only start up the scene once at this point in time inside the editor. There's no way to like start, stop the scene and then keep, keep doing that. Uh, so it's really not a problem at all and it will be implemented later. Okay. I think that is pretty much it as far as this goes. Um, yeah, let's just try and compile everything here and we'll see if this actually works because I believe it should fail to compile. Yep, so it's, see it's upset that we're trying to uh, convert, I don't know, we're returning a T pointer and it, I guess it wants a scriptable entity pointer, I'm not sure. Basically what we need to do is downcast this and I'll use a static cast for this. We need to downcast this into a scriptable entity pointer because that's what the function should return, even though obviously they are kind of the same type because a camera controller here is a scriptable entity and camera controller, of course, is T in that case. Okay, here we go. Take two. Does this work? It should work. Let's run this now. So now we're using virtual functions instead of using function pointers. You can see we can still move our camera like we did before, flipping to the other camera, it's there. Another, another test that we could do as well is to make sure that we can actually attach this same script to multiple entities. So can we attach this to our second camera by just copying that line of code there? And hopefully now what should happen is, well, it'll look the same, right? But then when I flip cameras, the square doesn't move because the cameras have both been moved the same way. And I guess what we could have done is actually instantiated these, like created these cameras at different transforms. Uh, I don't know if it's worth doing that. Um, I don't know if we can be bothered doing that. Let's see, second camera, active scene. Uh, yeah, we, we won't bother doing that, but you you could have actually, no, okay. We, we, there's a lot of fun stuff we can have with this. I just don't think that it's worth demonstrating uh, in this particular episode, but uh, obviously, you know, you could do some cool stuff and that might be something that you want to try out. So for example, in on create, maybe you can get the transform and assign a random value to like a transform between a certain, you know what, let's just do it. Cause I was gonna, I was getting a bit, a bit annoyed at that anyway. Um, the problem is we don't really have a random number generator. So I'm already regretting this, but Let's do this. Let's do transform three zero equals, uh, let's do, um, let's see. Can we, can we do, well, I can just do rand mod like 10 times 10 minus five. And well, we might need to seed the random number generator. Let's just, let's just see what happens. This is a complete mess. <laughs> um, but let's see if this actually works. Uh, I think it may have, I just don't know. I think 10 may have been, wow, we're at 65. Yeah, that, that escalated. Sorry, that's not what I meant. Um, mod 10, yeah, I don't need to actually do that. Let's do this. I forgot that it wasn't between zero and one. I think the mod 10, I, yeah, anyway, whatever. Yeah, so that's there and you can see the other cameras actually at a different location. If I move them, they're always gonna be at different locations. So that's a really quick way to just, you know, make sure that on create is working properly and also that we actually have two different camera controllers here. So that basically concludes that script. Now there is one more thing I wanted to mention and that is um, that we also have a bit of a bug in the code that someone has pointed out. I'm gonna put this here. Um, Clory has, uh, well, apart from changing this around to being like function pointers and a few other things have changed here, which, uh, is basically what we did. It's a little bit different here, but we, we've kind of changed the whole system around is removing these whole, um, 
ampersands here because if we take a look at where we actually use these, um, which is in a lot of places to be honest, but specifically in the same class with, with ent, uh, when we when we use group get and we retrieve multiple components, if we look at the type of what actually is returned here, and specifically this is a good example, uh, it returns a tuple. It ret returns a tuple by value of transform component and camera component references, right? So it returns a tuple of references. So first of all, we definitely don't need this here because the tuple itself contains the references, but also having this here doesn't make any sense. And I'm not sure why it even compiles slash, maybe it gives a compiler warning, I'm not sure, because obviously it's returning a brand new, it's a, returning a newly constructed tuple that is a temporary object. It, it's, it's being passed by value. So thanks Visual Studio. That was going to be all dramatic with the, anyway. So this should obviously be by value like this because the tuple itself contains the references. We don't need to worry about it. Obviously in scenarios such as this, when we like, for example, well, this is a different scenario, but we return this by reference. You need to make sure that you use auto reference because if you don't, it's going to copy it and then you're not going to actually affect the tag component in this case at all, since you'll be affecting a local copy of it. But in that scenario, we obviously want to do it correctly. So we also need to fix that here. Um, here, it's a bit different because, it, and if you're ever, if there's ever a doubt in your mind, just look at the return type. So view get in this case returns, what does it return? It returns a Hazel camera component reference. So if you don't do that, you're gonna be copying it. So just make sure that you do it in this case, but when you use structured bindings like this with a tuple, obviously the tuple itself internally contains those references and you don't need to worry about copying the tuple because, well, you're supposed to copy it. It's a local, it's a temporary variable that's being returned by value like that. Okay, I think we can delete this ant example code at this point, as well as these ridiculous functions that do nothing. Um, and that should conclude our little cleanup. I am, I am actually going to quickly check that pull request to make sure I didn't miss anything. One, two, no, it's just in two places it looks like. All right, great. All right, cool guys. So that is going to wrap up this video. Hopefully uh, we, hopefully everyone's on board with this new way of doing this stuff. Let me quickly fade back into here. Thank you guys for watching. Um, if you have any other questions on this or VTables, maybe we can discuss it in the next stream or something like that. But uh, other than that, uh, don't forget that you can help support the series by going to patreon.com forward slash the channel where you'll get access to Hazel Dev, which is a much more advanced version of Hazel with like C Sharp and like, you know, with 3D rendering and what else is even in there? Like an editor, you know, we're basically working on that weekly and we're going to be working on that weekly on Twitch live streams that are just going to be public for everyone. So definitely join up there if you want to. And then those, um, those videos on demand will be uh, available to both Twitch subscribers, but only for 14 days because Twitch only saves those videos for 14 days. So I'll be uploading them for patrons onto a YouTube channel forever. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. Uh, next time, what are we going to do next time? We, I think we'll just, I don't even know. We'll think of something. I'll see you guys then. Goodbye.